Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at AMC Entertainment, Tickets for AMC and Ape. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the behind the scenes for unlocated counterfeit shares and what they're doing. We're also going to be looking at the Citadel financial statement about the 45 billion sold, not yet purchased, but the methods they use to hide their synthetics, such as fair values, entities, and branches offshore etc etc we're also going to be looking at the 20th day for ftd and many more in this video so make sure you guys watch until the very end as always we're going to be taking a look at the chart first for amc so amc today went down 7.15 percent we closed at 6.10 and we bounced off of that 596 support so this is what we're going off with in terms of the fact it was a battle to try and hold the 703 and 6087. That's the battle we had to fight for. If we are able to close above it, then obviously we'll see the price continue going up. So now we know that in the short term, AMC firstly has a lot of resistance at this 824 and 884, which is previously one of the whole areas. So we have to bear this in mind, understanding now that there's a lot of pressure built up, but exactly the reason why, if we are able to see AMC break and close close above this area we're also going to be seeing amc of course be going up a lot higher because of the short pressure that is built right now and would be flipped if we were to break above it now amc closed at 610 we have 596 this week like i said the original goal of this week is to close above 703 zone now that is still possible we still do have one more trading day but obviously do bear in mind that this was also a hold zone meaning that there are of course pressure built up here as well but we have tomorrow to see the price end above 703 now if we don't actually see a break of 703 it is not the end of the world we also have to understand how amc will obviously react on this 596 level if we are able to obviously close above it that will still be very very good and again that is kind of what we want to see potentially what we're likely to be seeing is a contest of the zone over there but we are seeing a lot more selling pressure coming in right now bear in mind that it is very very low volume right now meaning that because guys we have to understand because of the lack of shares that are able to buy everyone's already bought into their shares they are creating synthetic shares to short not synthetic shares to buy hence while we're seeing low volume yet the price going down also the abuse with dark pool so we are in a bit of a bad situation in the sense that the real buying pressure actually isn't hitting the market but We'll be covering some stuff which will actually put them in a very very bad situation now if we take a look at ape so ape actually fell down even more today we're down 10.7 percent so we're going towards this lower support of 154 and 148 now like i said it was also the fight for the pivotal control of the 203 and 194 if we're not able to stay above it we're definitely going to be see the price going down even further and this is a lot further just like we've saw now and this is exactly what it's happening. But bear in mind, like I said already, that with Ape in the short term, yes, technical analysis is very important in the sense we understand what the price is going to do, where we have to watch out for, for the people who want to maybe look at short term trading for Ape. But in the long term, if the conversion were to go through that Ape were to be converted to AMC, then no technical analysis matters because Ape will try to catch up to the in the future in point of what the AMC price would be. So obviously, if we use now as an example, Ape at 167, if Ape were to get converted to AMC now, you will see a lot more buyers coming in and Ape will get close or as close as possible to $6.10 per ape shares obviously then the fundamental and uh, the technical analysis wouldn't be as in um useful as now of course but let's take a look firstly this is from um darren who talks about corrupt date so the behind the scenes such scam with low borrow fees buy such sell within hours illegal to sell unlocated borrow counterfeit shares so if you take a look at this screenshot and this is a crazy crazy screenshot essentially what we see is on the same day which is the 2nd of march 20, uh, 2023 this is also the 2nd of march 2023 but the time apart so this is 816 this is 1348 if we take a look at the fee and the shares availability so what we can see here is actually the, from the etfs is that the availability went from 280 to 2800 we're also seeing um 61 go all the way up to 921 etc etc so we're seeing the availability going up now not only that Something else that we are also seeing is, of course, actually, if you take a look at the fee, the fee went from 5.1 to 4. Now, some of the rest pretty much stayed the same. But what we're seeing here now is that within a matter of a few hours, they were able to manage to locate 
quote unquote locate these amount of shares to be obviously used to short AMC. Now, this is what we talked about in terms of the borrowed shares, the unlocated shares and counterfeit shares. These are not actually shares that are actually out there. Now, there are some brokers out there who without your permission actually lends out your shares under not with you, of course, knowing. But even so, the amount of shares they're able to find in such a short time right now to try and push down the price of AMC is all just a bit coincidental. And again, this is exactly what I mean in the sense that the volume is extremely low, yet we see the price go down 7%. And in times like this, what we have to understand is, is that because the volume is low, meaning that there is no one buying, but we also have to bear in mind that there is no one actually selling. These shares that are coming through are unlocated shares. These are shares that don't actually exist on the market, but is there to be shorted against us. And so that's what we have to, of course, bear in mind. Then what we have is actually the Citadel Statement on Financial Condition for 2022. So we have $45.764 billion sold, not yet purchased. So as you guys can see, this is the liability security sold, not yet purchased at fair value, which is 45,000 million, aka 45 billion. Now, when we look at this, the first initial reaction you're going to get is they closed their short positions by 20 billion because when we previously covered it, they were at 65 billion. However, what we have to understand here is firstly, there are many methods, at least in my opinion, they have used in order to actually be hiding these numbers. Firstly, we have to understand is that they said at fair value, meaning that these are the number that they can give themselves because it's at a fair value. Maybe there's loopholes around there where they're saying that this position is very volatile, we might not count it, et cetera, et cetera. This is obviously just an example. So when we have to, when we see that it's at fair value, we have to bear in mind that this is a number they could just give randomly, but obviously to a degree of what they want to say. Not only that, we have covered throughout the months of AMC, et cetera, et cetera, or on due diligence, that Citadel have many, many branches and entities and offshore firms. So what they can do is obviously move positions into these branches, into these entities, into these offshore firms. And by doing so, it obviously doesn't come under the Citadel Securities LLC statement of financial condition. So they could have a company that has maybe 5 billion short positions, another company with 5 billion short positions, another company with 5, etc., etc., so on and so forth. And by doing so, they're obviously able to hide away billions and billions of sold securities sold, not yet purchased, but actually look like it's 45 billion on the of Citadel, whereas it's much, much larger. We also have to understand the reason why they do this is by making short positions offshore, they are able to not report their short positions. We have covered this in previous videos before. Again, I want to repeat this by making these short positions into offshore firms, they don't have to report. So we don't actually see how much they're losing, how much they're paying, how much they're shorting, etc., etc. So this is a massive thing that they could be doing. And we have to bear that in mind because when we take a look at this and we see the fresh securities, this is for the 2nd of March, AMC is again on the list, meaning that this will be the 20th day for FTDs for AMC being the fresh security, um, the red show list, showing again that they are in fact actually over leveraging on AMC shorts. They are indeed shorting a large amount of AMC where it's come to the point where they have become FTDs. And so when you put that and you link it, it doesn't make sense that their short value actually decreased. Something that Moaz has said was that the bulk of liabilities are off balance sheets. Most of them have now moved their unsettled debt assets off balance sheets via foreign exchange. That's what Bank of International Settlement BIS warned could be the trigger for the global financial meltdown. Something we have also covered and something that you know is also bearing in mind about what could potentially be one of the methods that they are doing. So what we have to understand is that there are so many methods for them to be using in order to be actually showing a number smaller than what it is. We have been talking about the financial sheet of Citadel for 2022 for a very long time. I'm sure they are aware of it as well. So potentially they could be giving a number which shows that they have covered their short positions where in fact they haven't. If you take a look at this, in 2022, Citadel actually paid $7.75 billion to brokers for not delivering securities shown in customer account. Um, account. 
So payable to custom for unsettled trade, which is 7,000 million, aka 7 billion. Thank you, calls that hush money. Take it how you will. Comment down below what you guys think about that. And now, lastly, when we take a look at this from Game of Trade, we talk about bear market is not over. These levels on the bear market or the macro index spread have marked major tops in the market back in 1973, 1990, 2000, and of course, today. So, again, Data is very, very important. What we can do is with data is look at old data and predict what could be happening today. So every time it's hit this in terms of the macro index spread, we have of course seen the target, the a market actually tumble. If that were to happen now, obviously we have talked about it, decrease the collaterals, AMC will rise because they will have to um, cover their shorts in order to cover their collaterals. Anyway guys, thank you for watching the video. I'll catch you guys next time.